All right, so you've decided on what you want to offer on the property. The seller knows what they think it's worth, but who gets to decide what it's really worth? Jeremy Lovett here with the Happy Home Buyer number 17, and today I've got an awesome visitor, uh, Jay Josephs with Josephs Appraisal Group and Value Trend Solutions. Very good. He's a local appraiser. He's going to give us the lowdown on some of the appraisal pieces that we need to know and just kind of help us fill in on the whole piece on how value is established. So, welcome. Thanks for having me. Really a pleasure to be here. I'm a big fan of your work. <laughs> I've been a fan of this guy. We were just talking off camera for well over a decade. I've known him since the beginning. And really, that's kind of where we should start. So back in the day, appraisers were, I mean, chosen for a property because somebody like me, the loan originator, would have a relationship with somebody like you. We would know that you know this area and you're good with this sales price homes. And so when I got in an offer like that, I'd say, boom, I'm going to call Jay and I would just call you and you would do the appraisal. Right. Things have changed a tiny bit, right? They've changed a lot. You ordered appraisals through people for the right reasons because they knew the area, they were good at what they did, they were professional. Not everyone was like you, Jeremy. And I think the industry in total realized that these appraisals often are ordered without a neutral objective perspective. So I get that whole piece. Then 2009 comes around and they institute the Home Valuation Code of Conduct, right? Yes, sir. They change everything. Mm -hmm. They basically make it so that I, as an individual loan originator, no longer have access to you as the individual appraiser. We got that neutral third party in place. And so now, really, I'm clicking a button on my computer that says order appraisal. That's how it goes now. And then, so I click that button, goes through the magic little wire, because you're with VTS, Value yes. Trend Solutions. Like, yes. big company here locally, lots of mortgage companies use you guys. You're going to get my order when I press the button. How does it go from me pressing the button to you guys deciding what appraiser is going to get it? Yeah, so I think we're one of the good guys and we really care about, to, to us that's one of the critical components of the whole process mm -hmm. is making sure the right person gets that appraisal. And so we run it through a locational test and then we run it through a past quality test also. So order comes in, we see where it is, and we now, our system tells us, hey, we have 11 appraisers within... 10 miles of this zip code. Uh -huh. So those are our candidates. And then we can go and cross-reference it with their experience and how they, how well they've done previously in those areas, and then we can assign it based on that. To us, geographical competency is such an important aspect of getting the right appraisal, and so we take that process very seriously. And I've always agreed with you there. If, 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 if the appraiser's like home base is in Bucca, like my home base is in Scottsdale, I don't know anything about Buckeye. I'm not an appraiser, but like you would think that a, a, you know somebody located out there probably isn't going to do that great in Arcadia, a place right now that's hopping and has like defined borders and has all those things. So, so I get that. So you guys are running them through a geographical test and yes. then through a past quality test. So if they know the area and they don't have any recent problems ordering the appraisal, they're going to have an opportunity to bid out on that appraisal. We don't bid. We assign it first to the person we think is most qualified for the job. We check their queue uh -huh. and make sure that they're not overloaded with other work. And so we send it out to one person first. And if for some reason they can't do it or they come back uh, with a high fee or delays, mm -hmm. then we may either go back to you mm -hmm. and say, hey, it's gonna be two more days. This is the person we think is the right one for the job or it's gonna be an extra $100. How would you like to handle it? Mm -hmm. um, but we don't, to us, quality control starts with getting the right appraiser. And so that's priority number one. Got it. Now, without naming names, I know that that's, that system sounds like it's, on the verge of perfect for choosing the right appraiser. Other people have different systems, right? What do you think What do you think is going wrong with some of the other appraisal management companies and the way that they assign the appraiser? Because really, I mean, that's what you guys are in charge of, is assigning the appraiser. What are they doing that's maybe ending up with the wrong appraiser going out to the property? I'm so glad you've asked me this question. It's a really big deal. Um, some of our, comp when you get a call from an appraiser, mm -hmm. Don't assume this appraiser is the most qualified person for the job. That appraiser might be the cheapest. Mm -hmm. They're going to charge you the same fee. It's still going to be five hundred dollars or four seventy-five or four fifty, whatever it is. But if they can go out, the appraisal management company can go place it for two twenty-five or two fifty or two seventy-five, mm -hmm. or use a licensed appraiser instead of a certified appraiser because they need to work more. They might do that. So some people, they're so some companies are so bottom line oriented. It's who can do it the cheapest. Yeah. That's not the right way to order an appraisal. Sometimes it's who can get it done the fastest. 
Um, we try as some, one of the big metrics for us is how fast appraisals can get done. Mm -hmm. And there's some companies that's their main focus. And so if this person can get it done in three days, it's okay that they have to come from Santan Valley all the way to Arcadia to do it, but we can get it done in three days. That's what we're going to order through. That's not the right way to do it. Other companies, they'll blast the orders to their whole panel or to 20 different appraisers. Whoever clicks yes first gets the order. Just like that. I click the button fastest, I get the order. Yeah, if I'm sitting at my computer and the order comes in fastest and I click accept, I get it. That's not the way appraisers should be picked. Got it, got it. So you guys are the happy home buyers out there. When you're buying a home, the appraiser has a ton of authority, whether you they like it or not. If you guys wrote an offer that maybe would have you buying that home for more than it's worth, an appraiser without the right geographical competency that isn't necessarily as good with their QC, they may come in with an appraisal that meets value or exceeds value just because maybe they don't understand that the comps that they used were that one extra street over, so that no longer is Arcadia or that no longer you know meets it. And it's, that's definitely going to impact you. The exact same thing happens on the other side. You're going to fall in love with a home. You decide what it's worth, and a bad appraiser goes out there and decides that it's worth $10,000 less, even though it's worth what it's worth, right. which puts you in a bad situation. Are you paying extra money out of pocket? Are you going back to negotiate with the sellers? I see it every day. Chances are, that's a dead deal. So you may lose the actual home you're in love with because the appraisal management company just isn't choosing the right appraiser. So. True. From the home buyer perspective, you have very little you know, decision in, in, in choosing who gets the appraiser. Heck, all I get to do is push a button. Mm -hmm. um, but one of the things when I came here to Kansas State Bank and decided to do the whole shop me piece was making sure that they were aligned, you know, not only with you guys here locally, but with other people, including yourself here you know, nationally. Thank you. Because if, if I was working at a company that had nothing but bad appraisers, that would be headaches for you, headaches for your realtor, headaches for all of us, and we just don't want that. All right, so that's it. That's the whole kind of appraisal piece in a nutshell. We could go on and talk about it for hours and hours and hours, but we won't bother you with it. The point is, the appraiser is an important piece of the uh, piece of the pie, so make sure you're working with a lender that's got the right appraisal management companies yes. with them. Also, you do private pieces too, right? Yes, sir. So if you're selling your own home and you get a buyer that's paying cash, or if you're buying a property with cash, I suggest you give him a call. He knows the right people. He knows how to get it done. And he won't steer you down the road of craziness. Thank you, sir. All right, so you guys have an awesome day. This is the Happy Home Buyer number 17, and we'll see you on the next one. I understand the whole concept. So basically, hold please. <laughs> My favorite probably was the Dominatrix house that I appraised. Are you going to make me censor this video? You'll probably have to censor <laughs> okay, this video. Yeah. You know, your stories are just funnier than mine. I just sit here and press, <laughs> you know, the buttons and do those things. So, all right. Really? Twice?